scientific classification. Now, this admittedly isn't the most sensational of topics, but it's important foundational knowledge, not just for the world of entomology, the study of insects, but for the world of ecology and biology as a whole. So suck it up. Welcome to the Insect Spotlight Project, a channel dedicated to shining a light on insects, spiders, and any other creepy crawlies that get left out of the ecologic spotlight. Now I know we all want to hear about the beetles that spray acid out of their butts and the wasps that zombify cockroaches, but before we talk about specific groups of insects, I thought we should do a video on how we even group insects and other organisms in the first place. It's important. Trust me. Something about grouping things in a neat little category is just like scratches our monkey brain just right. And that's essentially what scientists are doing, is they're taking all the life on Earth and they're throwing it into neat little boxes uh, to help us understand each component better. And this dedication to identification and classification is what we call taxonomy. And the way we chose to organize this massive diversity of life is by relatedness. So organisms that are more closely related and share a more recent common ancestor are placed closer together. And organisms that diverged from each other a long, long time ago are placed farther apart. And the study of these evolutionary relationships is called systematics. And we use systematics to educate our taxonomy. So now that we know how we organize our boxes, let's talk about what those boxes actually are. The modern terms we use for our classification of organisms is built off a system originally made by Carl Linnaeus, a Swedish botanist. I could probably do a whole other video on Linnaeus. Super important figure. Had a pet raccoon. Weird dude. Regardless. So his original system created a hierarchy of classification that could be broken down into five major levels, but that has since been expanded to seven. These seven levels are kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, and species. Honestly, I think it would be easiest just to dive right into an example. So let's do one that we all should be familiar with, humans. Humans and all other animals are found in the kingdom Animalia, which should be easy enough to remember. Other kingdoms include plantae, which are the plants, uh, fungi, which are the fungi, bacteria, there are actually multiple different kingdoms of bacteria. But for now, we're going to focus on kingdom animalia. Within kingdom animalia, we are found in the phylum chordata, which is where you find all our vertebrates, or animals with a backbone, as well as some animals that lack a backbone but still possess a cartilaginous notochord. But let's not get bogged down in those details. Within the phylum chordata, humans are found in the class mammalia. Other classes in chordata include aves, which are the birds, reptilia, which are the reptiles, etc. But we are found in the class mammalia, which, as you could guess, are the mammals. Within the class mammalia, humans are in the order primates, which are exactly what it sounds like. Other orders include rodentia, which are the rodents, elephants have their own order, etc. We are in the family Hominidae, which is where you're going to find all our great apes, such as chimps, gorillas, and orangutans, and us. Our genus is Homo, of which we are the only extant or living species, and our species is Homo sapiens. Now you may have noticed that our species name includes our genus. This is what we call binomial classification, where the first part of the species name is the genus, and the second part is what distinguishes it from other members of that genus. Let's do one more example quick to make sure we have it. We'll try it this time with the monarch butterfly, since this is an insect channel and all. Monarch butterflies are in the kingdom Animalia as before, but this time they're going to be in the phylum Arthropoda, which is where you're going to find all our exoskeleton creepy crawlies. Within the phylum Arthropoda, they're going to be in the class Insecta, which are our insects. Other classes in this phylum include Arachnida, which are the arachnids, Crustacea, which are the crustaceans, millipedes have their own class, centipedes have their own class, etc. Within the class Insecta, butterflies and moths are the order Lepidoptera, and within Lepidoptera, you're going to find monarch butterflies in the family Nymphalidae which are the brush-footed butterflies. So family is where we start to get a little more specific. Their genus is Danaeus, 
and their species is Plexippus. And once again, there's going to be multiple different species of butterfly within the genus Danaeus, but there's only one monarch butterfly, and there's only one Danaeus Plexippus. All right, now I know that was a lot, so I'm going to encourage you to go out on your own, look up any species you're interested in, and see if you can kind of track their taxonomy uh, and run through those seven classifications. It should also be noted that there are other classification levels besides those seven. There's like super families and uh, tribes and even subspecies, but for now, don't even worry about those. I would just encourage you to focus on those seven. Uh, and I'll probably do another video another time uh, to look at those little in-betweens. I also wanted to throw you all a little mnemonic to help remember those seven levels. There are a bunch, but the one I always used was King Philip Can Order Fresh Green Spinach. So that's Kingdom, Phylum, Class, Order, Family, Genus, Species. So if you're having some trouble remembering them, hopefully that can help. Thank you all for listening. I've got plenty more content to come, so if you're interested in keeping up with it, please hit that subscribe button. Grateful for y'all. Peace.